that again. With the use of Zuka Ne3's database, it's easy to navigate and create Tunnus drawings. As you can see here, the components within the libraries are already broken down into the relevant tables. So for this example, I'm going to go through connectors, and as you can see, they've been further narrowed down into the different suppliers. So I'm just going to choose a Deutsch uh, DT series. So once again, I'll go down to DT series, and within this, you'll see all the different options that I have. Now, within that, there is a description, so I can actually use uh, the database as finding components. Similarly, I can actually come up here and I can search the, the Deutsch uh, as a supplier. Otherwise, quite simply, I can use a manufacturing part number. I can say a DT06, for example, and then I can search that pretty quickly. At the same time, you can actually search connector pins um, to facilitate uh, finding the parts for a specific project. So once you've got your different options, so once you've got your part that you actually need, once I've found my desired connector for this example, it's a dt 6 4s I can simply click it, drag and drop onto the form board sheet that's been opened, and now it will give me the three different options for this particular example that there are as far as the symbol goes. As you can see, there's a pin view, an image, and a side view. In E3 series database, you can actually create multiple views. Uh, these are the defaults that come within this particular component. However, you can easily create a different one to suit your particular needs. So in this example, I'm going to use a side view. I'm going to simply place it and place the designated table. As you can see with the table, there is a fair bit of information that's there, obviously blank because nothing's assigned yet. So signal, color, size, core. These tables are all database driven and they can be modified to show whatever information you need and they will be updated as it goes. Once you've got your drawing complete, you can actually go into your sheet settings and you can actually change the scale should you need to. So if you need to make it larger or smaller, quite simply, you can change the scale and you can re continue to draw and mimic your drawing. Once again, as you can see here, I can actually stretch this one out and you'll see the blue line changes to the red dotted line accordingly. So it gives you the freedom of drawing as you need to, um, to scale if you need to or not to scale. So you can quite simply tell um, if you've actually following the scale in your drawing to the manufacturer. One other function that we can actually use in the form board uh, to take advantage of E3 series and the software as well as the schematic that you may have already done is as you can see here, I've got an example of a block diagram with a few different connectors and they're relatively pins. So these particular ones will be done pin by pin. Um, instead of the obviously a manufacturing drawing, there's, there's no particular length. This is obviously an overview or a schematic between three different components. Um, so I can actually come in, I can create a new form board sheet. Uh, so once again, I'll go here. I'm just going to stick to an A3, select the form board. I can change my scale should I need to. Uh, I will in this particular example to give me a bit more space. So once I create a new sheet, I can actually come through and I've got my three different blocks A1, A2, A3. I can select the three different or the four different connectors from there, I can right click, I can place on form board. So it's gonna automatically give me the um, selection to choose which particular um, symbol I want. So I can place the first one. I can place the second one, I'll just flip it. And I'll place my bottom ones. And once again, I can rotate it in line. So as you can see, once I've done my schematic, it becomes pretty simple to actually mimic and correct the, correct the drawing. So you can see from here that blue dotted lines actually representing the logic. So it does understand that these particular connectors are joined within the schematic. So within that, you actually have the advantage of uh, having your tables pre-filled. So you can see the particular gauge and color uh, target to and from and the signal are actually already filled. So once you have done your schematic, creating a harness drawing from that is actually quite simple. Like I can actually create a drawing, for example, uh, with multiple connectors. I'll just rotate these again. Uh, 
Okay, as you can see, obviously it looks a fair bit different to your initial and we've got our different segments in place. So once again, I can come in connection properties and I can actually adjust or add my segments to be a match the manufacturing. Once I've add so, added so, I can add my different dimension information if I need to, a cable protection, etc. So I can actually come into this middle segment, for example, and actually select segment diameter. So I've just gone off the TXL 20 gauge uh, white, uh, black, uh, sorry, red rather. Um, cables, so you can see the different uh, cables within this particular segment. There are six, and it's actually given me a overall diameter of five point almost four millimeters. Um, so it actually becomes quite beneficial once you have your overall diameter, um, and it goes through a particular segment. So I can go to this segment, um, and I can go segment diameter, and it shows me the different cores that are actually going through there. So this particular connector has got less. Uh, I can go segment diameter and it's got two only, so telling me it's a 3.556 millimeter segment. So it becomes quite active, quite quick, and quite simple to create a drawing based on your schematic. Otherwise, you can quite simply create one from.